Okay, so we have this 2010 Chevrolet Camaro in, and it has a returning check engine light, it keeps coming back. Thing runs rough. It has the 3.6 liter V6 in it, it's the LLT. Um, now, just scanning it, I see we've got a random cylinder misfire, P0300, also a cylinder five misfire, P0305. But this is the one here, this is the bad boy that's giving us issues, and it's a P0009, which is Engine Position Performance Bag 2. So there is a bulletin for these engines, and it's to do with the crankshaft position tone ring. The, those rings are actually pressed onto the crank, that's the way they manufacture them. But there is no set screw, it's a press fit tolerance, and um, basically what happens is the tolerance isn't correct when they make these things and over time it starts to shift and that's going to throw out the timing on the engine hence why it's got this engine position system performance fault and uh it really sucks because the bulletin says to remove and replace the crankshaft and the crankshaft's like five thousand dollars canadian my cost and uh it's expensive so i've seen there's another video out there on youtube uh jasper engine performance i think it is they do uh a video on um, they build these engines and refurbish them I'm guessing but uh, they have a jig made up that they put on the end of the crank and they actually drill through the tone ring into the crank and lock a set screw in there so that it can't move so uh, I'm gonna be making a video show you guys uh, the disassembly of this engine removing the crankshaft and then uh, we're gonna make up our own jig and Put a set screw in this thing and get it back uh, back together but that'll be in another video uh, what I want to show you today is just how to inspect this thing to actually see if the, if the crank tone ring is out of, um, out of position or not so let's go under the hood and I'll show you where we got to start okay so the crankshaft position sensor is located uh, up in there you see this this shield that's right here um, so the crankshaft position sensor sits in a hole uh, right here. Now you won't be able to see the top of the hole. I've already take the, taken the bolt out. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And I pulled the crankshaft position sensor out already. It's just sitting uh, right over here. Can't really get to it. Um, so yeah, 10 millimeter bolt, it's easy to get to. You can get to it with a wrench. And that shield is, uh, it's paper thin. Um, you can just move it out of the way. So, um, but yeah, so once we get that off, you're gonna basically need a video scope to do this. That's how I did it. I don't know if you can do it with an inspection mirror, if you'd actually be able to see it or not, but we're gonna stick a video scope down there. And then uh, I'm gonna get the bulletin up so we can take a look at that too. And then we'll uh, go ahead and rotate the crankshaft where we need to see and uh, see what it looks like. All right, so um, looks like this uh, service bulletin here, you can see the reference number right here. Um, it pertains to these fault codes, P0016, P0017, P0018, P0019, P0008, and P0009. Um, you can see all of these vehicles here that are affected that have that 3.6 liter V6 in it. And then, uh, here we go. Following diagnosis might be helpful if the vehicle exhibits these symptoms. Um, basically, if it has uh, two or more of the following symptoms or fault, fault codes, here's a picture of the uh, crankshaft right here it says if the reluctor has moved then replace the crankshaft so they do not want you to fix this thing um i guess there really isn't a fix for it but we're gonna fix it anyway we're gonna try the only concern i have is uh drilling the drilling the crank and stuff like that is it going to be out of balance it's a very small amount of weight but i mean this thing needs to be balanced so we're gonna see. I don't know if uh, there's somewhere I might be able to send it to get balanced. But um, taking a closer look, you can see 
there's a counterweight that's part of the crank and it's got some holes drilled out of it for weight. That's how they balance them. And then you can see the flat spot in the tone ring right here. And that indicates top dead center. The computer uses that information to determine uh, when to fire the spark plugs and uh, injectors. It gives a computer a timing reference of, of where the crankshaft is at for all the cylinders. So it's very important where this thing is sitting. You can see here, they give you a distance. There should be three teeth as marked by the yellow dots. And starting from the end of this counterweight, that's part of the crankshaft. So it gives you sort of a measurement, uh, 25 to 26 millimeters. This measurement is from the end of the machine surface of the crankshaft throw to the edge of the open space in the reluctor, approximately three and a half teeth. So that's nice that it actually gives me a measurement. I know where this thing needs to sit. I've got pictures for reference. And here is a good versus a bad uh, tone ring. So you can see we got the three teeth. That's good. This one has shifted to the left. That's bad. So now we know what we're looking for. There's bad. And uh, it says the distance can be offset either clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, both will result in these codes and balance holes do not come into play when determining if the reluctor ring has slipped out or not. You're just looking at the edge of the weight and with these three teeth that are on the right side. Right? Oh yeah, sorry. Left side. Yeah. Left side. All right, let's get the uh, video scope. Take a look. All right, so we got the video scope down in the crankshaft position sensor hole. And you can see this is the end of the counterweight on the crankshaft. So obviously this is our tone ring. So I'm gonna spin it around, we'll count the teeth. We got one, two, three, four, five teeth. You can see that it has shifted uh, clockwise on, t on the crank. So it is over uh, about two teeth and uh, it needs to go back the other way. So one thing that I'm going to check um, when I make this other video before I pull the engine out of it, I would like to take the pan off and see if there's any way that I can move that tone ring um, without removing the crankshaft itself. But I'm pretty sure that that counterweight the way the counterweight sits and then the tone ring and it'll be the the end of the block there'll be no way to actually get in there uh you wouldn't want to use like a punch and a hammer because you probably just mangle one of the teeth off so uh, i just thought i'd show you that's how you're going to check it and uh, if you have a better way let me know in the comments but thanks for watching stay tuned for this other video uh show you how we're going to fix this